If you took the August SAT, these questions showed up on your test, and most of you were cooked. If you took the August SAT and watched Prep Hub, these questions were not new to you because we predicted them before they even appeared on your test. And today, we're doing it again. I'm going to be showing you four questions that will show up on your next SAT, so unless you want to miss out on free proven points, make sure you stay until the end. All right, guys, getting into with question number one. Now, y'all have probably heard this already, but College Board went ahead and added 300 new questions into the question bank last August, a week before the August SAT. And so some new topics have appeared in the bank with unit circle being one of them. As you can see right here, this question is from the bank. And a unit circle question was actually spotted on the June SAT. People were saying it was an experimental question. So I do think with all of these trends, College Board is trying to get the unit circle back into their SAT after a temporary hiatus. So you guys do have to know how to solve these types of questions. But anyway, getting into the question, we have point F lies on a unit circle in the XY plane and has coordinates one comma zero, which I've modeled right here. Point G is the center of the circle and has coordinates zero comma zero. And point H also lies on the circle and has coordinates negative one comma y, where y is a constant. Which of the following could be the positive measure of angle FGH in radians? All right, so now given that information, here is where the unit circle comes in. The unit circle is going to be drawn like this, just a regular circle, right? And you need to know the points on a unit circle. So one comma zero is the rightmost point in a unit circle. There's no point after that. And because that trend is on the right at the x coordinate of one, that trend also has to be on the left at the x coordinate of negative one. So they really say at, um, this point h has coordinates with negative one comma y, but y has to be zero because at x equals negative one in the unit circle, your y coordinate is zero. So point H right here is going to be at negative one comma zero. Now they're asking us which of the following could be a positive measure of angle FGH. FGH is a straight line, meaning in the context of a unit circle, a straight line on the x-axis typically represents an angle of 180 degrees or pi radians. So from F to H, this angle right here this is going to be pi radians. And another thing you have to know about the unit circle is one full revolution to get from one point back to another point, the distance traveled around the circle is going to be two pi. So if I'm trying to go from one point back to the same point, I travel two pi. So keeping that in mind, now we know what we have to do is we just have to go from point F all the way back to point H. And obviously pi is enough for that, but that's not in our answer choices, right? So we have to test each of these answer choices. So this is basically what we have to do is divide by two, divide all these answer choices by two to get the number of revolutions because one pi is just half of the distance of the circle, right? So we want a full revolution to calculate it. So we're gonna divide all of them by two. And once you do that, you're gonna get 12 pi for C and then 12.5 pi for D, A and B, you're going to see that you're not going to get an enough number of revolutions. So basically, starting from F, 12 revolutions is what? An even number, right? So if I'm undergoing 12 revolutions and I'm starting at F, I'm going to go back to F. But what I want to do is go back to H. So I want another half of a revolution or one more pi. And so where is that? As in D. C is wrong because it's taking me back to point F while D is going an extra pi 2h satisfying the requirement that this angle is a positive measure of angle fgh all right guys moving on to question number two this question has showed up on the most recent august sat and it has been tested a lot this year so i do think this is a must know in the given equation a is a constant the sum of the solutions to the equation is 34 over 3. every time you hear sum of solutions write down negative b over a because there's a very high chance you'll be using that formula what is the value of it? So I went ahead and copied this question down here. And the first thing I'm gonna notice is that I have W plus A on both sides. So what I can do is since I have two roots, I have W minus A and W plus eight, both of which can get me zero in the parentheses. 
I want to get rid of w plus a by canceling them out in order to focus on this root of w minus a right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back to w plus a. So now it's just going to be 12 times w minus a equals 4, which is just going to be w minus a equals 1 third, because I'm dividing my 12 on both sides. And now I want to plug in a value for w that's going to get me a 0. So I'm isolating for w. So w is going to be a plus 1 over 3. That is one of my solutions. But I also have w plus 8. If I plugged in negative 8 into w, I would get 0 on both sides. And that would mean when I plug in negative 8, that is a root of my equation. So negative 8 is also one of my solutions. So w equals a plus 1 over 3 and w equals negative 8 are my two solutions. And I'll just cancel this w plus a out in order to focus on my other parentheses, my other solution. So now what is what does that mean? The sum of the solutions, so a plus 1 over 3, that's one solution, minus 8 or minus 24 over 3 is going to give me a minus 23 over 3. And that is going to be equal to 34 over 3. This is my sum of solutions. So now all I have to do is just basic algebra from here. So I'm going to add 23 over 3 to both sides, giving me a equals 57 over 3. That simplifies to 19, which is going to be my final answer. All right, guys, moving on to question number three. Now, I did do most of the work for this question already on the whiteboard. So if you want to do it on your own before checking with the video, I suggest you pause and do that right now. But if not, a line intersects two parallel lines, forming four acute angles and four obtuse angles. So that's basically going to be two parallel lines. They don't intersect. They go their own way. And then a line is going to intersect both of them in a way that you form four acute angles and four obtuse angles. So let's just say this is my acute angle. Then due to angle properties, this has to be my acute angle. And then these would be my obtuse angles. And that pattern is going to repeat down here. So keeping that in mind, let's take a look at it on a bigger scale. The measure of one of the acute angles is 7x minus 6, 10, as notated down here. And the sum of the measures of one of the acute angles and three of the obtuse angles is negative 14z plus w or negative 14x plus w, excuse me, that's a typo. What is the value of w? So, okay, two things. I have my q angles measure, and in order to get to negative 14x plus w, I need to know what my obtuse angle is. So how do I do that? Well, I know that in a straight line, if I have an acute angle right here, I'm gonna have my obtuse angle right here. And those have to add up to 180 because that's how angles work on a straight line. So what I can do is I can take 180 and then subtract the acute angle from it to get my obtuse angle. So what would that be? That would be 180 minus in 7x minus 6, 10 in parentheses. And once you distribute it, it's going to look something like that. So 180 minus this is going to give me 70, 790 minus 7x, which is my obtuse angle. Now we can go ahead and work on the second part of the problem. So 3 times my obtuse angle plus 1 acute angle is going to get me negative 14x plus w. So 3 times 790 minus 7x plus 7x minus 610 equals negative 14. Again, this is supposed to be an x. Negative 14x plus w. So now when you perform that algebra, I'm going to go ahead and do that on Desmos actually. All right, so I want to compute this on Desmos using a regression. So the way I'm going to do that is 3 times 790 minus 7x1. I need that to perform a regression. All my x's and y's have to have subscripts. So this plus my acute angle, which is 7x1 minus 610. Instead of the equal sign, we're going to use the tilde sign. And that's going to be all, all be equal to negative 14x1 plus w. And once you do that, you'll see that you'll get 1760 for the value of w, which is going to be your correct answer. Before we end this video, I wanted to shout out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an interactive learning app that helps you become a better problem solver with thousands of hands-on lessons in math, science, programming, data, and even AI. Instead of just watching lectures, you are actively solving problems step by step.
which has proven to be way more effective for actually remembering concepts. And if you're preparing for the SAT, that's exactly the kind of skill you want to build. Brilliant doesn't just drill you on formulas. It trains you to think critically and work through tricky questions, exactly what you need to be well prepared on test day. Even just a few minutes a day keeps your brain sharp and builds habits that last way beyond the SAT. You can start learning for free at brilliant.org slash prephub by scanning the QR code on screen or by clicking the first link in the description. On top of that, Brilliant's giving all viewers here 20% off on an annual premium subscription so you can unlock everything they offer and dive deeper into the topics you need the most. Big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching.